Hi, welcome to Anna Academy. This is Anna Academy teaching doctors. Do let me know if I'm visible and audible to all of you. Let me just check if uh, I have if the live stream has started. Let me just check this once and then we start. We are currently having a revision of the entire biochemistry course. Yes. Okay, great. So what we are doing is currently we are uh, having a rapid revision of the entire course on biochemistry. Okay, we have completed the crash course and now what we are doing is we are doing a revision. Within, uh, within this year, before the start of the next year, we shall be finishing off with the revision. So that will be twice done. This biochemistry syllabus will be twice done. Okay. Tonight, what we are going to discuss is the first session is on uh, uh, beta oxidation of fatty acids, that is lipid metabolism. And the second session will be on uh, amino acids. Okay. The synthesis of various non-essential amino acids as well as um, the few clinical applications. Okay. Right. So, I am your educator for biochemistry. I am Dr. Shivangi Shukla. Um, quickly, let us discuss about the types of subscriptions available on an academy. Okay. So, this is a new platform. This is a new uh, uh, channel on YouTube by the name of Unacademy Future Doctors. Here, this is dedicated specially for Prof. 1 and Prof. 2. The, uh, and I also take class on the Unacademy platform, the Unacademy app. Uh, there are two types of subscriptions available there, Iconic as well as Plus. The Plus subscription comes with access to India's top medical educators through their live as well as recorded video lessons, the uh, notes, their notes in PDF format. Also, you can access their uh, comprehensive question bank of more than 25,000 questions. Okay. The Iconic subscription comes with uh, additional resources like access to prep lab as well. Okay. Uh, do not forget to put in the educator code DRSHUKLA, Dr. Shukla, while checking out. It will fetch you an additional 10% discount. All right, guys. So, let us begin with lipid metabolism. All right. We have completed uh, this about, we have done this, I think twice we have done earlier on special classes and we have always come back to it, always come back to beta oxidation a lot of times because it is extremely important, okay. So, in lipid metabolism, what are we going to discuss? Two things, that is fatty acids and cholesterol. Now, the cholesterol class that was supposed to be held yesterday, cholesterol and ketone bodies that got cancelled, postponed because... That did not get cancelled, it has gotten postponed because of some issues. So that I will be taking most probably on 26th. You will get notified way in advance. Okay. By, to, to, by tonight or tomorrow morning, you will get the notification when uh, those two classes shall be held. Alright. So today what we will be focusing on is fatty acids. Alright. Now, uh, see, uh, the metabolism of fatty acids in the body involves a lot of organs okay it involves the liver it involves the muscles it involves the adipose tissue and it involves the intestines okay these are the places where it is involved okay now what is the interplay of fatty acids in the body what are the different processes through which the fatty acids undergo metabolism uh, there uh, the anabolism as well as catabolic cycles both shall be integrated here on this slide and we'll quickly discuss it okay so this is fatty acid it can either be taken in the diet okay for essential fatty acids or the non-essential fatty acids can be synthesized in the body okay now when fatty acids undergo esterification what is esterification? It is a it is an anabolic process. Okay, different fatty acids molecules join together. Different molecules they join together. Then what do they form? They form a secondary structure that is triacylglycerol TAM. Okay, different fatty acids molecule fatty acid molecules will tag themselves together. They will tag themselves together to form one tag. Okay, by this you can remember they are tagged together. Okay, and this tag molecule, when it breaks down, this is a catabolic process of lipolysis. 
okay this tag molecule when it is like a storage form of fatty acids when this triacylglycerol molecule breaks down it will form free fatty acids okay now these fatty acids will undergo further metabolism they will be broken down why because the ultimate aim of fatty acids is to what to generate energy atp okay so now which tissue utilizes fatty acids for uh, for energy production which which is one very important tissue that utilizes fatty acids for energy come on tell me in the comment section very important question one tissue one organ that utilizes fatty acids for energy production predominantly that is the heart the cardiac muscle okay because fatty acids generate a lot of energy and um heart requires a constant supply of energy the cardiac muscle it requires a constant supply of energy because it keeps on pumping so fatty acids are the main source of energy for the heart okay next so now when the when these fatty acids will undergo catabolism what will they form acetyl coa what is the ultimate product of fatty acid metabolism acetyl coa and how does this acetyl coa uh, give energy how does it lead to production of energy when it enters the krebs cycle after it enters the tca cycle this will produce a lot of carrier molecule uh, carrier molecules like nadh fadh they will undergo etc electron transport chain and then they will generate atp okay guys got it so the process of breakdown of fatty acids the catabolism of fatty acids is beta oxidation which we shall be focusing upon here and the generation of fatty acids from acetyl coa is lipogenesis so lipogenesis is formation of fatty acids whereas lipolysis is also formation of fatty acids do you guys see through lipogenesis also fatty acids is formed through uh, lipolysis also fatty acids are formed but this involves catabolism of triacylglycerol and this involves anabolic pathway that is acetyl coa molecules join together to form fatty acids okay do remember the definitions the terms what is esterification what is lipolysis what is lipogenesis what is beta oxidation all these terms you should remember okay got it next so next what is uh, this acetyl coa it enters the tca cycle or the krebs cycle and it generates atp okay and this acetyl coa molecule is the linker pathway it is the linker molecule why it is a it is a lover of 3 remember that is what we discussed it is a lover of 3 acetyl coa why because it is formed from three different pathways here it is getting formed in the fatty acid metabolism it is also formed from carbohydrate metabolism it is also formed from amino acid metabolism and it undergoes three it is it is involved in three different pathways that is ketogenesis cholesterologenesis and in the tca cycle okay got it got this interlinkage you understood about this hi ananya how are you are you following this this is the interlinkage of different pathways that are involved in fatty acid metabolism now as i told you the different organs involved in fatty acid metabolism are liver muscle intestine and adipose tissue okay what happens in the liver liver is the most important organ for metabolism okay what happens here is see these fatty acids are getting esterified into triacylglycerol triacylglycerol is undergoing lipolysis to form fatty acids okay got it also now what happens is these fatty acids can also undergo what ketogenesis okay now what will happen what are these ketone bodies they are the source of energy during starvation okay they are the source of energy during starvation so what happens is these ketone bodies they will travel they can uh, they can be utilized during uh, starvation all right 
Now, what is this triacylglycerol that I told you about? This was the storage form of fatty acids, isn't it? Now, this storage form can also be utilized elsewhere. Where is it utilized? In the muscle, in the intestine and in the adipose tissue. Okay. Now, there is this carrier molecule called lipoprotein. What is a lipoprotein? It is a, it is a type of protein. Okay. Usually the carrier molecules in the blood are what? They are all proteins. So this lipoprotein molecule is also a type of protein. But it has one lipid group attached to it. Okay. So this very low density lipoprotein is the carrier molecule for triacylglycerol from the liver. Okay. Now, now this will form a combination lipoprotein triacylglycerol. It can be taken up by the muscles, okay, where in the muscles what will happen? Through the action of the enzyme lipoprotein lipase, this lipoprotein will be removed and this triacylglycerol can be used for production of fatty acids and they can in turn be esterified to form triacylglycerol as storage form. This lipoprotein triacylglycerol complex can be taken up by the adipose tissue. And this lipoprotein will be removed by the enzyme lipoprotein lipase. Okay, this lipoprotein lipase removes the, this carrier molecule and this triacylglycerol molecule that can be stored in the adipose tissue and can be converted into fatty acids whenever there is any need. Also, in the liver and in the adipose tissue, all the excess of glucose an excess of glucose is also diverted towards fatty acid production, if you can see. Okay, how? Through acetyl-CoA molecule. Always remember, acetyl-CoA molecule is the linker molecule. Okay, and what happens in intestine? In intestines, the monoacylglycerol molecules and the fatty acid molecules that are formed from the dietary triacylglycerols. Okay. So, what happens is in the diet, whatever we are eating, that is also in the form of triacylglycerols. That in itself, that in that form cannot be absorbed by our body. So, what, what, what does our body do? Our body first breaks down this triacylglycerol into monoacylglycerol and fatty acids. Then these are again fabricated, these are again packaged into the absorbable form of triacylglycerols. And now these triacylglycerols are transported from the intestine through another carrier molecule that is chylomicrons. So the carrier molecule from the liver is VLDL. Whereas the carrier molecule from the intestine is chylomicron. And it moves through the lymphatics. Okay. Alright. Got it. Got how different organs behave, how dif different organs participate in fatty acid uh, homeostasis inside the body. Alright, next. So the main, uh, the main uh, mechanism, the main cycle that we are going to read about tonight for fat regarding fatty acids is the oxidation, beta oxidation of fatty acids. Okay, right. So the first step in beta oxidation is what? Activation. Do you guys remember another uh, metabolic pathway, another another um, class, another lesson that we have finished about two or three days ago where the first step was activation. Can you guys tell me another procedure where the first step is activation? Activation of an adapter molecule. Can you guys let me know in the comment section if you remember what was that mechanism, what was that uh, pathway, if you can say. What was that pathway that I am talking about? What is that pathway where the first step is the activation of the adapter molecule? Can you guys tell me? No? It's in the chapter of nucleic acids. If you guys can recall, guys, we have done that a lot of times. I want you guys to be very thorough and you should think on your feet by now because it has already been uh, more than about 30 days since we have started with this. I want you guys to think on your feet and to always, always go back to where I'm, where, go back to any lesson that I can uh, point out. 
you should be so thorough with this entire course all right so the activation of trna molecule if you guys can remember with the amino acyl trna synthetase enzyme where the amino acid is attached to the trna through this enzyme do remember please guys you have to have to revise because there is no substitute to revision see we have started with these revision classes but they'll be of no use if you don't go back and revise just attending these classes just listening to it in a passive form is not going to help because this is almost the fourth or fifth time i think this is the fifth or sixth time maybe when i'm allegorizing when i'm referring to the chapter of translation and this is not accepted we have revised it so many times i am highly disappointed with the response okay so activation of trna please go back and read that chapter on translation please guys we have you can watch the revision classes you can watch the classes on uh, an academy special classes two or three times i have taken you can also watch classes on on this channel youtube because we have taken i have taken a lot of classes on translation okay so now let us not digress let us focus on fatty acids the first step is activation of fatty acids okay this is the only step in the beta oxidation of fatty acids that requires atp okay this is the only step and why does it how will you remember this because activation anything that requires activation will require energy okay what is the enzyme here acyl coa synthetic sorry synthetase synthetase because a okay synthetase what is the difference between synthase and synthetase there is an enzyme called synthase there is an enzyme called synthetase can you write acyl coa synthase here can you write here acyl coa synthase or do you have to write synthetase only synthase does not require atp and it requires atp okay got it and uh, so what is what happens in this process is this fatty acid molecule is converted to very obviously acyl coa since the enzyme is acyl coa synthetase okay the enzyme is acyl coa synthetase and this it will what, what will it do it will convert fatty acid to acyl coa now what is the next step the next step is this this procedure was happening where this procedure is happening in the cytoplasm okay this procedure is happening in the cytoplasm or the cytosol where as beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria so very obviously the next step is transport of acyl coa inside the mitochondria now there is one problem this acyl coa is not very strong why this acyl coa can easily cross the outer mitochondrial membrane but it is not strong enough to cross the inner mitochondrial membrane so what happens is it goes and it sits in the inner mitochond intermembranal space it is sitting here okay now it requires a vehicle to transport it through the inner internal or inner mitochondrial membrane okay so this cpt1 molecule or this cpt1 molecule will do what it will provide it with the car the car is carnitine carnitine is the carrier molecule this acyl coa will sit in this car and through this translocase enzyme carnitine acyl coa translocase through this translocase enzyme this acyl carnitine will be transported inside okay this carnitine will quickly take it inside now this cpt2 that is present in the inner mitochondrial membrane does not like people using their car so what will it do it will tell acyl carnitine to remove acyl coa and to and it will quickly send its car back to the garage that is the space between the two membranes inner mem intermembranal space okay guys followed now what has happened the, the purpose has been achieved acyl coa has entered the mitochondria and here it will undergo beta oxidation 
And what is the process of beta oxidation? There is successive cleavage of fatty acids into two, two carbon acetyl CoA molecules. Suppose these are the fat, this is the fatty acid chain. So successively it will be broken down into two carbon compounds. What are these two carbon compounds? Acetyl CoA molecules. Okay. So if I ask you, both the beginning and the end of fatty acid oxidation is characterized by the same molecule. Will it be true or false? Come on guys, tell me. Will it be true or false? Both the beginning as well as as well as the end of fatty acid oxidation is characterized by the same molecule. I leave the answer in the comment section. I'm not going to reveal it in the chat. I'm not going to reveal it in this lecture. I want the answer in the comment section and tomorrow whenever we discuss I want the I want the explanation. If you guys are not answering right now, I want you guys to go back and watch the lecture or revise your notes and then tell me the answer. Okay, because I want an interactive class. I don't want sleepy students. Okay. Got it? So after now, why is it called beta oxidation? Because every cleavage is occurring at the beta carbon. Okay, it is occurring at the beta carbon. Okay, and what is the enzyme involved? It is acyl CoA dehydrogenase enzyme. Okay, guys, got it? Following, so this is what? What is the beta oxidation? This acyl CoA synthetase enzyme is also called thiokinase. It is involved in activation of fatty acids. This thiokinase molecule it requires ATP, and any kinase enzyme usually requires the cofactor magnesium. Okay, got it. So the final product is acetyl CoA, which enters the TCA cycle. Okay. Now, uh, a short, uh, very short topic on peroxisomes that we'll quickly discuss. Okay. Now, in peroxisomes, per what are peroxisomes? You guys would have uh, read about per peroxisomes in uh, during your PMT entrances, right? Peroxisomes are specialized organelles present inside the cell. These peroxisomes, what are they? Here, what happens is they what do they do? What does what does what do peroxisome do? They are involved in metabolism of the peroxide radical. Peroxide radical, okay, especially involved in free radical metabolism. <coughs> okay, oxidative stress. So this this peroxisome is what prevent uh, helps us prevent oxidative stress inside the cell. Okay, so what happens is in the peroxisomes, there is a modified form of beta oxidation. Okay, normally what is happening in beta oxidation? There is formation of two carbon acetyl CoA molecules. Okay, but in peroxy in the other in, in the other tissues, wherever beta oxidation is occurring. And where is it occurring? Inside the mitochondria. But in peroxisomes, what happens is there is a modified form of beta oxidation. Okay. Where what happens is there is formation of acetyl CoA and peroxide. And this peroxide is broken down by an enzyme called catalase. Okay. Now, if you have seen here. FADH2 molecule is produced which enters the electron transport chain or the respiratory chain. But in peroxisomes, what happens is what happens is no such phosphorylation or no such FADH2 production takes place. So these are the two differences. Okay, peroxide is also formed, which is broken down by catalase, and no FADH2, NADH2 is formed here. Now I have a question for you guys before we close this chapter, this uh, session. I have a question for you guys and that question is how many molecules of acetyl-CoA can form from a fatty acid chain that has 20 carbons? 
Okay? I'll ask here. Okay, the question is how many molecules of acetyl CoA shall be formed on beta oxidation of one molecule of when, sorry, one molecule of, and there will be two questions for you to answer. What are these two questions? A. 20 carbon fatty acid chain, and B is 25 carbon fatty acid chain. Now you guys have to answer me in the comment section. All of you A and B, both you have to answer. We have understood how beta oxidation takes place. What is the difference between beta oxidation in peroxisomes and mitochondria? Now you have to tell me how many molecules of acetyl CoA shall be formed upon beta oxidation of one molecule of a 20 carbon fatty acid chain and a 25 carbon fatty acid chain. This is an even number of carbon containing fatty acid chain. This is an odd number of carbon containing fatty acid chain. Now, do let me know in the comment section, guys. Let me know this. Come on, I'm going to wait for two minutes and then I'll tell you the answer. Within these two minutes, you have to tell me. At least tell the first one. It is very easy. We have just discussed. What did we discuss during beta oxidation? Successive uh, cleavage occurs after every two carbons, right? So that two carbon acetyl CoA molecules are formed. Mm -hmm. So, come on, I think we've got a sleepy lot tonight, huh? No response till now. I haven't got a single answer. I disappointing guys. This is a revision class. You, these things should be on your tips. We have discussed this in a lot of MCQ sessions as well that we conduct. Come on, tell me what is the answer. No one. So, for an even number of carbon containing fatty acid, what happens is you will divide it by 2. As simple as that. Because successive 2 carbon containing acetyl CoA molecules are getting formed. So, 20 carbon chain fatty acid will lead to the formation of 10 acetyl CoA molecules. Why was it difficult for you guys? I would like to know. And this 25 carbon containing fatty acid, for this what happens is, one molecule of propanyl CoA is formed. Okay, for odd number of carbon containing fatty acids, what happens is, one molecule of propanyl CoA is formed, which goes on to form succinyl CoA. And this succinyl CoA enters the Krebs cycle. So, this propanyl CoA is what? Gluconeogenetic. Okay. Now, this propanyl CoA molecule is 3 carbon containing. Okay. Prop is what in organic chemistry? It is 3 carbons. So, this propanyl CoA molecule has 3 carbons. So, you have to remove 3 from this. 25 minus 3 is what? 22. 22 divided by 2, that means these many acetyl CoA molecules. So it will form 11 acetyl CoA molecules plus 1 propanyl CoA molecule. Got it? Now you have to remember this every time, guys. Extremely, extremely important. Okay. 
next uh, now we shall be concluding this session we'll be uh, starting with amino acids at 10 pm all right you can go back relax for some time have some water snacks come back join me at 10 pm for amino acids okay all right bye bye guys thank you